Hi Virgo Sun and Rising, welcome to your December 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. December is a busy month and it also is the culmination of 2021. So I think that uh, for some people you might have noticed that the fall period, um, I'll just say <laughs> for those people who had spring instead of fall, um, the last few months may have felt a little bit slowed down because we did have several planets retrograding um, starting in, in uh, the middle of the year or even in May. And then, you know, things are coming back up to speed. So the month of December starts off with um, the, the very first day, Neptune goes direct in its own sign of Pisces, and Pisces is your opposite sign. So um, obviously this is a general reading, so even though I get exact, it may not have gone down this way for every single one of you, uh, whether you're sun or rising Virgo, because the degrees of the sun arising really do f factor into when these things happen, but at least you can get a general overview. And Neptune went into Pisces, uh, almost 10 years ago. So it's been in this sign for a long time. And Pisces is your, uh, seventh house. And that is the house of committed partnership. So if you are somebody who's married or you have been in a long-term relationship, and by long-term, I mean, let's say 15 years, well, anything over 10 years, you could say. Um, but especially, I would say, if you've been married maybe 12 and beyond that, then you can really see that the shift in the relationship because there can be something going on behind the scenes. Neptune, unfortunately, can get a bad rap of being deceptive, being addictive, being uh, confused, all of these things. And in the seventh house, it can create confusion because of deception too. It can also be very idealistic and spiritual so and artistic. So it has... Um, you know, the challenging, but also, uh, the aspect that is very, um, that blesses people. And so when Neptune has been retrograding, um, probably I think since June, it may have made you feel like you were getting a reality check in your relationship if you were involved with someone. And that may have been felt in, in some cases, almost like a crushing blow. If you have been kind of sticking your head in the sand about something, you might have gotten some kind of feelings of disillusionment or downright um, things happening to make you aware of what is really going on behind the scenes. This might have culminated in something back in September when there was a full moon in Pisces around September 20th. Now, um, Neptune goes direct. And if you still are with that same person now, obviously this is about people who are in those types of relationships, then you might actually, um, make peace with it somehow and still feel inspired. Um, this is actually really great for people who are doing some kind of uh, self-promotion because the seventh house can be public relations and Neptune can cast a spell over others and make you very like have an aura that is, I, I'd even say mysterious, but maybe um, dreamy, that kind of thing. Um, not saying it's necessarily how you look, but just kind of how you come across. 
On the 4th, we have a solar eclipse at 12 degrees of Sagittarius, which is your fourth house of home and family. A solar eclipse um, can bring something to your face, like shove it under your nose, you know, the disinfectant, you know, when they say sunlight is the best disinfectant, meaning that if something is festering underneath the surface, then it is brought up to light. And solar eclipses are powerful new moons, and you would expect new beginnings to accompany this. And perhaps in some cases that can be the case. Um, but in other cases, it might be a situation from your childhood that... Um, you were either in denial over or you were um, somehow confused about and now the picture is getting clearer. And um, they're just, in general, with eclipses, there are shakeups. And this is the last one in this area for you. So Virgo, have you had any shakeups thus far? Because you've had um, you had a solar eclipse here a year ago in December, and you had a lunar eclipse this past May. So uh, only you can it it it, it ne doesn't necessarily happen on the date of the eclipse. It can happen a little bit before or afterwards. But it, in that general vicinity, um, that can indicate whether or not um, this is going to manifest for you. And if you are around that 12 degree mark with your sun sign or your rising sign, you know, within a few degrees in either direction, then this will form a square to your sun or rising sign. So... Um, that can um, create tension, but that tension can create the desire for some kind of um, resolution, and that can lead to change too. So if you want to move, it might be a little bit, there might be a little stress around it, but you can actually make it happen. Sometimes we want to do something and there's just, we feel very mellow about it and all of that. And it never materializes because um, either we don't apply enough effort to actually do that thing or um, we don't want it enough. I mean, we're not generating enough energy behind it and even with squares that that frustration can still create that desire and that desire can drive you to attract new circumstances the on the 13th we have mars going into this fourth house now mars has an aggressive edge to it in the fourth house and by the way the fourth house is the mother, I'm going to just say, just say it, even though there's, there are some schools of thought that's a father, I'm going to say it's a mother, or you could say it's a family of origin. And Mars is here. Now that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to fight with your mother, or some, you know, a parent. But it can mean that if other factors are already, uh, you know, perfect, like the, the perfect storm kind of thing. And you've already had the solar eclipse here. So there could be something that has transpired or just um, on the emotional level, because this is a water house. So this may be felt inside where you have come to a realization about something. And if it's been not so pleasant, you may feel like you want to confront your mother or this uh, parent. And, you know, I have, I have heard, um, 
it said, and I think that there's a lot of truth to this, that sometimes um, ch children, and we could, you know, talk about adult children in particular, are angrier at the parent who was not the abuser. So if you had two parents, or if it's a parent and a step parent, whatever, and one parent is more of the narcissist, and the other one is the enabler of the narcissist, you might be more, you might be angrier at the enabler. And um, I can't remember what they said. My assumption is because we perceive the person who goes along with it as um, going along with evil, really. And there's almost like if, if that person had a kinder disposition, you're like, well, you know better. You know right from wrong. You shouldn't have done that. And it is very frustrating in those types of situations. The truth is, is that that person is obviously has a weakness and they they don't feel like they can stand up to a dominant person and so when that happens even if that other person is abusing the child in some way uh, the other parent or the other adult may be so afraid of losing that person in their life that they're willing to turn a blind eye at what that person is doing to their child. And um, so that might even be uh, that kind of thing. If, if it doesn't have to be that this mother was the perpetrator, but she might have enabled another adult to um, hurt you in some way and you, you finally have kind of put two and two together or, you know, I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying that specific scenario. But um, the other thing that has nothing whatsoever to do with that is doing renovations on your home. Mars is very like, you know, fixer-upper. Either you're like swinging a hammer or... You're just doing a lot of rehab, that kind of thing. A lot of activity. If you're moving, you might be doing a lot of packing and there's just like a lot going on. On that same day, on the 13th, um, Mercury goes into Capricorn. And that is your fifth house, Virgo. And the fifth house is the house of love and creativity. Now, if I were going to talk about that progression from the fourth to the fifth house, psychologically, it could be if you really like maybe you're in therapy and you're discussing your child and then you had Mercury in the um, fourth house, you know, until almost the, the halfway point of December, and you might have been talking to a therapist about your past. And then the therapist says, well, what about your inner child? Let's work on that. And you do a lot of thinking about that. Um, the fifth house can be your inner child. It can also be creativity, especially, I would say, of the literary kind. So if you take all of the things that you've been thinking about that have to do with your past and put it to paper... Um, that could be a memoir, that could be some kind of, um, you know, a book of poetry or something, you know, whatever, a play, a screenplay. You might be talking to somebody who you have um, romantic feelings for. The fifth house is romance and or thinking about them. On the 18th, there's a full moon at 27 degrees of Gemini. So here's another mutable sign that squares you. This is coming from the other direction. So this is in your career sector, the 10th house. And a full moon is a culmination. So that can mean finishing a project, um, getting a promotion, getting 
recognition for your efforts. And of course, a promotion would cover that as well. Uh, or even, I would say like a raise. But um, getting the word out about uh, your abilities, you know, that's the way I was going to put it. I was thinking about something. Yeah. And it's, well, what I was thinking about was Neptune going direct in that seventh house. And that could even play into it where, especially if you're in show business, because Neptune rules fantasy illusion. But I suppose any kind of artistic pursuit that doesn't necessarily involve performance, but involves, um, creativity, maybe that as well. Um, you just have, it's like you're casting a spell over people. On the 19th, Venus goes retrograde at 26 degrees of Capricorn. So that is this fifth house. This could, you know, you out of any one Virgo could see an X reappear with Venus retrograde. And actually, Mercury is going retrograde in mid-January. And um, that can also be hearing from somebody from your past. And the fourth house, like I said, is your past. And uh, one of the scenarios I was even wanting to mention is, um, and I kind of didn't do it because I was thinking, well, what are the chances? But now that I think about it, because it's December, a lot of people um, reconnect with their families. And sometimes they may travel long distances, uh, or whatever, short or long to go back to their hometown. And maybe there's, uh, a, even like a, um, high school sweetheart, a friend of your brother's, you know, like, somebody that you knew from the past that you start talking to who still lives there or who's visiting their family as well. And this is that sense of someone. But um, I, I would say that would be more of Mercury retrograde. Venus retrograde could be the actual love that you had for someone. But one of the things is to remember why you broke up so that you can be more grounded about the potential to get back together. Because if a person just gets so caught up in, oh my gosh, we might get back together. And that is so exciting. The inconvenient truth of why you broke up might be dismissed or underplayed. And it really shouldn't be because it might have a lot of validity and that person might be kind of a sed seducer. They might have that um, ability to make you forget everything else that happened. But that's not necessarily in your best interest to do that. So um, you have to keep your head, in other words. And, um, and this is going to be with you for a while because uh, Venus goes direct at the end of um, January, but it stays in that um, fifth house until early March. And that's when it goes into the next sign. So that's pretty amazing. And this is a, this is a house because Venus is connected to creativity and this is the house of creativity that can be very good for your work, especially if you're redoing some prior work, maybe there's something that you're salvaging that's going to be really um, a major success if you take care of it. On the 21st, we have the, the solstice and the sun is going into Capricorn in that house. And this is just fun, you know, and, um, Virgo people, it's not that you're like overly serious necessarily, but you are, um, I think that in, in the sense that you're serious about 
being, being, um, uh, what's the word? I was going to say being productive in life and not, you know, you might think certain behaviors are frivolous if they're just for fun, because you might say, well, what is the end game here? Like, what do I accomplish? And not that you're trying to be very uh, ambitious, but you want to, um, have something to show for it. And this may be the one time when you allow yourself, and I'm talking about every year when you have, um, planets in Capricorn, especially like the sun, which rules the fifth house and just allowing yourself to let your hair down and to be more, um, laid back and not as concerned with checking off your to-do list. And so this is the holiday season. So that's what, how some people think of things like they have, they're like, Oh, thank God I have an excuse not to work this week. And they have to give themselves permission. Well, you don't really have to do that. That's your choice. But, um, at least you will feel like, um, comfortable with it and not feel guilty. So as long as you feel good about it, then that's all that matters. On the 28th, Jupiter goes into that seventh house and Jupiter has been there very briefly earlier in 2021, but now this is for the whole, for the long haul. And Jupiter is actually going to go into your eighth house. I don't know. I think it's in uh, uh, July. I don't know what month it is, but it's like um, it goes into Aries uh, next summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so in any case, while it's in the seventh house, this can be very good for committed partnership. It doesn't mean that you're going to get married during the next six months, but it could mean meeting somebody who qualifies as a future potential life mate. And Jupiter is that um, kind of like being in the right place at the right time, you know, that luck, um, having more opportunities, the expansion aspect. And with Jupiter, it can even be a Sagittarius. And Sagittarians have something in common with Virgos. They are both mutable signs, which means that they are very flexible. They may have multiple interests. And I feel like they would be a meeting of the minds, that they're both intellectuals, and that that is very important for both of these signs is to meet somebody that they can have those kinds of, um, intelligent conversations. So, um, anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this Virgo. If you would like a personal reading, if you would like to look at 2022 and see what kind of transits are specifically, um, going through each of your houses, um, or have your, and have your chart analyzed, I have a double reading called the deep dive reading, which is just basically an um, extended, you know, double reading hour of transits and hour of chart analysis for a special price. I'm a sun and Sagittarius, moon and Virgo um, individual. And so I like to combine the bigger picture with the details. And I think both are important. And you can find out more information about my readings at the link below. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.